Hello, my name is Matt Dieter, and I was diagnosed with uh, neuroendocrine cancer uh, about this time two years ago. Um, it was one of those days in your life where um, basically uh, everything's sailing along smoothly, you know, having no issues, no, you know, real, real truly cares in the world, but um, uh, I guess my story starts with, uh, with me being an active tennis player. I uh, started having some uh, problems with uh, some minor pain in my side. And uh, after the tennis season uh, kind of wound down, uh, wound down uh, I was still having some of those, uh, those pains in my side. And a good example would be if I hit into uh, my right shoulder, you know, I would get a, a sharp pain that would go down through the side of my body. And uh, so I said, something must not be right. I talked to my wife about it and she said, nah, it doesn't sound good. So, you know, you probably ought to go and, and talk to your doctor. And that's whenever I was, uh, uh, basically had my first scan, you know, my first ultrasound. And they did find a, a mass that was on my liver. So that started a journey uh, that led me to Dr. Seen in his practice. Uh, you know, once I was diagnosed with the neuroendocrine tumors and they were able to see the total size of the tumors, uh, they were able to find on my liver one that was about the size of a, uh, a small iPod. Uh, so it needed some really, really intricate surgery where they ended up having to take close to 70 to 75 percent of my liver uh, and remove that part of my liver. And that wasn't the only thing that was done during the surgery. Um, in neuroendocrine tumors uh, and that type of uh, cancer, normally it's very, very rare that a, a tumor would first start on the liver. So they knew that there was a primary tumor probably somewhere, and uh, Dr. Seen had to uh, perform exploratory sur uh, surgery at the same time. And lo and behold, they did find the primary tumor. It was a golf ball sized tumor. Uh, that was right on the outside of, of uh, my small intestine, right where the small and large intestines uh, come together. So surgery needed to take place in there to remove that uh, small tumor that was about, like I said, the size of a golf ball, as well as the, the intricate surgery that needed to be done uh, on my liver. Um, needless to say, the, uh, you know, the body and its healing capabilities is amazing and and the thoughts and prayers from my support uh, uh, group and family, uh, you know, really paid big dividends because, uh, you know, the, the one of the miracles other than Dr. Seen being here to perform the surgery was that the, the liver is one of the most amazing organs in your body. It was able to regenerate itself basically within 30 days to almost 80 to 85 percent of its original size. Um, at this point in time, two years after the surgery, uh, I'm feeling probably better than I ever felt before, uh, probably in the last five to ten years. And as I researched more about neuroendocrine uh, tumors and, and that cancer, um, I, I have come to find out that it's often misdiagnosed. Um, and uh, being a slow-growing cancer, it can pronounce you know, some very different types of symptoms, mostly um, you know, nausea, flushing, things like that. But in my case, I really didn't notice any of those symptoms. So, um, you know, I think uh, in, in my discussions with Dr. Seen and my oncologist, they, they think that the tumor that was on my liver probably grew to that size over a course of three years. And my primary tumor might have been uh, there, you know, around my small intestine um, uh, for maybe seven years or more. So being a slow growing cancer, it is one that, that can sneak up on you. And, um, uh, you know, I would just say that the way that I found out to go to the doctor in the first place was something in my body really didn't feel normal, um, you know, because I, I have always had different aches and pains, and just in life, you know, you go through, and you know, uh, you know if you're active, you're going to get uh, bruises and <laughs> different things like that. But uh, this just wasn't normal, and uh, I think whenever your body tells you that something's not normal, it's very, very good to uh, to go ahead and seek uh, seek counsel from uh, from your doctor, doctor or, or medical team. Um, you know, I do uh, do want to thank Dr. Seen for you know many many things. You know, not just the surgery. If it was just surgery, um, you know that that would be enough. But uh, Dr. Seen's uh, bedside manner, uh, the way that he worked 
with the other uh, teams of doctors. Uh, you can tell that he has respect within the community. Uh, you can you can tell that he had respect uh, with with all of the nurses and the on staff people uh, at the hospital, uh, and the whole experience from the way that he treated my family, my wife especially. Uh, you know, because it was with any type of surgery, there's ups and downs, and when you're healing, there's ups and downs. So all those little bumps along the way, uh, Doctor Seen was able to uh, to make them a lot easier to endure. Uh, by you know providing us easy access to him to ask any type of question that we that we had, uh, so uh, once again from a bedside manner perspective, from uh, from just the, the sheer technical ability of his of his skills uh, to do intricate surgery, um, all those things combined together with uh, you know about two years ago now it's almost a two year anniversary of my surgery and. Uh, if it hadn't been for Dr. Cena, I, I definitely would not be here today. So uh, I have four children, my wife, uh, you know, no grandchildren yet, but uh, at 51, I'm just, you know, glad to be here. And I, I thank uh, Dr. Cena as, as well as all of the, uh, the medical professionals, my wife, my support uh, group, um, my mom and dad and everybody that, that uh, were, you know, looking out for me, God especially. And um, I just want to thank Dr. Seen for everything that he's done and his, uh, his friendship has, has removed throughout the years. And uh, thank you.